Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Your teaching has revolutionized my life. It set me on course for, for where I'm going for the rest of my life. So thank you, Andrew, for all you've done for me. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach through a series that I've entitled Christian Philosophy. And this book is a 280-page book that talks about what a Christian philosophy is, how it should affect our life. The first half is kind of theological. The second half is very practical about taking these truths and applying it to some of the major issues of today. And specifically, I focus on creation versus evolution, abortion, and homosexuality. And this book was written a long time ago, and yet I guarantee you it's gotten nothing but just more important. These issues have become even more front and center since I wrote it. And then this little booklet, Observing All Things, takes some of the pictures, the graphs that are in the second part of this book and just condenses them into kind of a reference thing. So we're offering this little booklet as a free gift. We're asking for a donation of any amount for that Christian philosophy book. And then I have a study guide. I have CDs, DVDs, and a USB that will also take this teaching. And I encourage you to please get this. It's really, really important. I promise you this is something that would bless you. So the first two days of this week, I basically was dealing from uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, where the scripture says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tra tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And I've taken a bunch of those words in that one verse and have been expounding on them. I like to use the word philosophy because that doesn't seem to resonate with most people, and so I get to define it. And that way, uh, steer their thinking on this. If you use worldview, if you use paradigm, those things are uh, sometimes misunderstood and misapplied. People have different things. But when you talk about philosophy, it just draws a blank. What this is talking about is the way you think. It's not individual thoughts. You have, to, you have to come up with an entire approach towards things. Whether you realize it or not, you have a philosophy about God. There are some people that see God as a harsh, mean, angry God. There's other people that see God as a distant, disconnected God and that He really doesn't have anything to do. There's some people that don't even believe there is a God. And if any one of those things that I've mentioned, see, if that's your overall view of things, it is going to dramatically impact the way that you live your life. People that don't believe there's a God, they don't believe they're accountable to anybody, it just frees them to live in sin. It frees them to take advantage of people, to rape, rape punt, plunder, uh, do anything, because after all, there's no accountable accountability for anything. You know, another philosophy is an extreme sovereignty of God. There's a lot of Christians that believe that God is sovereign to the degree that He controls everything that you do, everything you say. Nothing happens but what God allows it. That's a wrong philosophy. And it'll lead to terrible things. For instance, in James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So it says submit, yield to things that are from God, and then resist the devil. If you believe that God controls everything, then even if you resist the devil, you must be resisting God because God, the devil couldn't do anything without God's permission. That is just perverse on so many levels. And it leads people to being totally passive, to where they don't resist the devil. They don't understand anything about authority that they have, and it leads to all kinds of problems. And yet that is a philosophy. It's a way, and people look at this. And I even heard one guy, now this is extreme. Most people don't take it this to this extreme, but if, if the extreme sovereignty of God was true, well, then this would be an accurate statement. But I actually knew one guy who had a problem with lust. He was a pastor of church, and he was lusting after the women in his church. He said when he preached, 
he would in his mind just undress that woman and look at her, even while he was preaching. And he finally got so convicted about this that he realized that this must be demonic. And he actually had an appointment with somebody that was going to go and cast this spirit of lust out of him. And his words, I heard him say this, is that when he went out and put his hand on the door handle of his car, he said that the Lord stopped him and he says, you couldn't have these demons if I didn't allow it. Therefore, you, I gave this demonic lust to you to teach you something. And the guy canceled his appointment and, and took it that it must be God that gave him this spirit of lust. That's just perverse. I saw a thing on television where a man who I know, he's a friend of mine, he actually interviewed this woman who this woman and, his, and her daughter were abducted at gunpoint, taken out to a remote place. This man raped both of them, then had them lay on their stomach and shot them in the back of the head. And the daughter died. The mother survived. She had physical problems, but she survived. And she was on this television program saying that God allowed this and that this was God's will and that he somehow or another was working all of this together. That just... That amazes me, but there are people that believe that God was the one who was into kidnapping, rape, and murder, and blame God for that. That's a philosophy. They look at the world through this and try and say that God does everything. You know, let me just put it to you this way. Does God control everything you do? I think if you were to be honest, there are some of you that know God wants you to go this way. He told you to do this, and you go that way. And if you'd be honest, every one of us have done that. So if God doesn't control you all of the time, and if you have a freedom of choice, well, then what makes you think he controls everybody else against their will? I tell you, that's a wrong philosophy. And this is how people are having Satan strip them, spoil them of the things that God has given them. It's through the way you think. Let me turn over here to Genesis chapter 3, and just show this to you. You know, if you go to the book of Genesis and you see how something first happened, it kind of sets a precedent all the way through the Bible. You can uh, take lessons from that. So right here is where Satan came against Adam and Eve and deceived them and drew them into temptation. And if you can understand how it happened to them, then you can understand that this is still how he's fighting against you. Matter of fact, over in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, I fear lest as Satan beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be beguiled through the simplicity that's in Christ. In the same way that Satan came against Adam and Eve is the same way that he's coming against us. So how did he come against Adam and Eve? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, I'm going to go through a, a number of these scriptures here, and I won't finish all of this today. I've meditated on these verses literally thousands of hours. I could preach on just about every single word here for a long period of time. But I'm just going to hit some of the highlights. First of all, notice it says the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. And so Satan chose a subtle animal. You know, it says over in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 that as Satan beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So it shows you that Satan was the one behind this. And it also says over, Jesus is one that said this in John chapter 8 and verse 44. He says that Satan, the devil, is the father of all lies. And so these were lies that were spoken by the serpent. Satan is the father of all lies. As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted through the simplicity that's in Christ. This was Satan that spoke through this animal. Man, there's a reason he had to use an animal. I'm not going to take time to do that, but it goes back to the authority of the believer. A spirit does not have authority. A snake has more authority than Satan had. He couldn't force Adam and Eve to do anything. If he could have forced them, he would have come and used something like a mammoth or an elephant or a tiger or some vicious animal 
TO COME AND TRY AND FORCE THEM TO YIELD TO THEM. BUT HE HAD NO POWER TO FORCE THEM TO DO ANYTHING. SATAN DOESN'T HAVE ANY POWER TO FORCE YOU TO DO ANYTHING. THERE'S SOME OF YOU THAT HAVE BELIEVED A LIE. YOU'VE GOT A WRONG PHILOSOPHY AND YOU THINK THAT SATAN IS STRONGER THAN YOU AND THAT YOU JUST CAN'T OVERCOME THIS ADDICTION, THAT YOU CAN'T OVERCOME THIS SIN, THAT YOU CAN'T DO THESE THINGS. THAT'S A, lo that's a LIE. IT'S A WRONG PHILOSOPHY AND you've, YOU'VE BELIEVED A LIE SOMEPLACE. SATAN CANNOT DO ANYTHING TO YOU WITHOUT YOUR CONSENT AND COOPERATION. SO THAT'S THE REASON THAT SATAN DIDN'T ENTER INTO SOME BIG ANIMAL, YOU KNOW, LIKE A MAMMOTH AND JUST PUT HIS FOOT ON EVE'S HEAD AND SAY, EITHER EAT OF THIS TREE OR I'LL SMUSH YOUR HEAD LIKE A MELON. HE DIDN'T, he didn't TEMPT THEM, HE DIDN'T THREATEN THEM BECAUSE HE HAD NO POWER AGAINST THEM. THE BIBLE SAYS THAT ALL ANGELS ARE MINISTERING SPIRITS SENT FORTH TO MINISTER FOR THOSE WHO SHALL BE HEIRS OF SALVATION. LUCIFER WAS CREATED AN ANGELIC BEING AND HE HAD NO POWER AGAINST ADAM AND EVE. THAT'S THE REASON HE HAD TO ENTER INTO THE MOST SUBTLE, THE MOST DECEPTIVE. THE WORD SUBTLE MEANS DECEPTIVE, CUNNING, sh SLY. HE ENTERED INTO AN ANIMAL THAT COULD, could USE WISDOM TO SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER MANIPULATE AND LIE TO EVE. Well, this is really important what I'm saying. Again, I've thought about these things for thousands of hours and there's just no way I can unpack everything that the Lord has shown me about this, but I pray that you get a revelation that Satan didn't come and force Adam and Eve into sin. He had no power to do it. He has no power to force you or me into defeat, into depression, into fear, INTO WORRY, INTO CARE, INTO SICKNESS, INTO POVERTY. HE CAN'T DO ANYTHING TO US WITHOUT OUR CONSENT AND COOPERATION. AND I KNOW THAT THERE'S PEOPLE RIGHT NOW THAT SAY, WELL, I HAVEN'T COOPERATED WITH THE DEVIL. MAN, I'VE GOT CANCER AND I, THERE'S NO WAY. I DIDN'T GO ASK FOR CANCER. I DIDN'T DESIRE CANCER. IT JUST CAME UPON ME. WELL, YOU DIDN'T COOPERATE IN THE SENSE THAT YOU WANTED IT OR SOUGHT IT OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT, AND YOU MAY NOT HAVE EVEN COOPERATED IN THE SENSE THAT YOU WEREN'T YIELDED TO THE DEVIL AND OUT LIVING IN SIN TO WHERE YOU MADE YOURSELF VULNERABLE TO SOMETHING THAT HE WANTED TO DO. BUT YOU DID COOPERATE IN THE SENSE THAT WHEN CANCER CAME AT YOU, YOU BELIEVED THAT YOU WERE ONLY HUMAN AND THAT CANCER IS INCURABLE AND YOU BELIEVE THAT THIS IS JUST THE WAY THAT IT HAS TO BE. THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN PSALMS CHAPTER 91 THAT NO PLAGUE WILL COME NIGH OUR DWELLING THAT HE WILL GIVE HIS ANGELS CHARGE OVER US AND THEY'LL BEAR US UP IN THEIR HANDS SO THAT WE NEVER EVEN DASH OUR FOOT AGAINST A STONE, that, THAT ONLY WITH OUR EYES WILL WE SEE AND BEHOLD THE REWARD OF THE WICKED. WE'VE GOT PROMISES THAT WE CAN OVERCOME ANYTHING THAT THE DEVIL THROWS AT US. BUT IF YOU DON'T BELIEVE THOSE PROMISES, IF YOU'RE IGNORANT OF IT OR IF YOU'VE REJECTED IT OR IF YOU'VE BEEN TAUGHT THAT GOD IS THE ONE WHO PUTS SICKNESS ON YOU, THAT PHILOSOPHY WILL STOP YOU FROM re RECEIVING THE HEALING THAT GOD HAS FOR YOU. IF YOU REALLY BELIEVE THAT GOD IS THE ONE WHO MADE YOU SICK, WHY WOULD YOU GO TO THE DOCTOR AND TAKE MEDICINE OR HAVE SURGERY TRYING TO GET OUT OF GOD'S WILL? SEE, THAT'S JUST CRAZY. I TELL YOU, ONLY A RELIGIOUS PERSON WOULD BELIEVE THIS KIND OF STUFF. THAT'S A PHILOSOPHY AND SATAN CAN'T JUST FORCE YOU. SO YOU MAY NOT HAVE DESIRED IT, YOU MAY NOT HAVE PRAYED FOR IT, YOU MAY NOT HAVE BEEN COOPERATING THROUGH LIVING IN SIN, BUT YOU'VE BEEN THINKING THAT, WELL, I'M ONLY HUMAN AND SICKNESS IS JUST NATURAL AND THAT, YOU KNOW, AS YOU GET OLDER, YOU HAVE TO HAVE THESE THINGS HAPPEN. SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, YOU HAVE HAD SATAN PLANT THOUGHTS IN YOUR MIND, YOU'VE ACCEPTED THEM AND THAT MADE YOU RECEPTIVE TO WHAT SATAN IS TRYING TO DO IN YOUR LIFE. IF YOU WERE TO UNDERSTAND THAT, MAN, I AM ABOVE ONLY AND NOT BENEATH THE HEAD AND NOT THE TAIL, THAT THIS IS THE BLESSING OF GOD AND THAT, PRAISE GOD, NO PLAGUE IS GOING TO COME NIGH MY DWELLING. YOU KNOW, I WAS JUST TALKING TO SOMEBODY TODAY WHO HAD A LITTLE BIT OF COLD OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT, AND I SAID, MAN, YOU OUGHT TO COME OVER HERE AND HUG ME BECAUSE NO GERM CAN TOUCH MY BODY AND LIVE. MAN, YOU DO THAT, YOU'RE GOING TO GET HEALED. I BELIEVE THAT. AND I KNOW THAT THERE'S... I'VE HAD PEOPLE TELL ME THAT I'M OF THE DEVIL. I'VE GOT SOME PASTORS IN MY LOCAL TOWN THAT ON THAT VERY ISSUE THAT I JUST SAID, BRANDED ME A CULT AND SAID THAT I'M OF THE DEVIL. AND YET THAT'S EXACTLY WHAT PSALMS 91 PROMISES. 
But see, there's a lot of people that don't let the Bible get in the way of what they believe. And they just believe these things that are contrary to what God's Word says. So you may not be saying, oh, devil, come destroy my life. But if you are accepting some of these wrong thoughts that you, you can't control whether you get sick or not, you can't control anything. You're just going with the flow and it just depends on what problems come into your life. If, if that's what you believe, if that's your philosophy, well, then you are cooperating with the devil. The Bible says in James 4, 7, Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The word resist means to actively fight against. You got to be active. You can't be passive. To sit there and say, Dear devil, please get off of my life. Or to say, God, would you please get the devil off of me? When he told you, you resist the devil. See, you are cooperating with the devil if you're just praying and asking God to do what he told you to do. You aren't believing what the Word says. So these things here, this is really significant that he didn't go enter into some animal that could intimidate Eve, cause fear in her, force her to obey. He had no power to force her to do anything. And likewise, Satan has no power to force you or me into defeat in any area in our life. I know that there's many of you watching this that think this is just too good to be true. Well, that's what the gospel is. And I admit that it's rare that there's not a lot of Christians who will take the attitude that I'm talking about, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. This is what the scripture says. I'm telling you right here that Satan entered into the most cunning, sly, deceptive animal that God had created because he needed that deception. He had no power to force Adam and Eve into anything. And it's only through deception that Satan can come against you. Satan's only power is deception. Now, prior to Jesus coming, Satan was the god of this world and he was dominating people and they were in a bad state. But when Jesus came, Jesus dealt with the devil. Jesus said that he came out of hell with the keys of death and of hell dangling on his side. He literally renovated hell. He destroyed him that had the power of death. That is the devil out of Hebrews chapter 2. And Satan is a defeated foe. He doesn't have power to force you to do anything. His only power is deception. And that's the reason that it says over in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, Beware, be on guard, lest any man spoil you, strip from you through philosophy, through a way of thinking. And that's how he destroys you. Satan is coming against us with lies and deception. And sad to say, the church and religion has embraced and is the biggest propagator of many of Satan's lies. But the Word of God is the plumb line. The Word of God is absolute truth. If you want to be set free from any philosophy that is stripping you of what Jesus has purchased, you need to stick your nose in the Bible. You need to learn the Bible. And man, you need to let it be the dominant force in your life. Romans chapter 3 says, Yea, let God be true and every man a liar. You need to let God's Word be true and let the philosophy, the way of thinking, the paradigm, the worldview that this world has, you need to let it be a lie and let God's Word be absolute truth. Any success that I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a lot of success. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I've done everything I, the way I should, but I've done things... Uh, man, better than it would have been without the Word of God. Any success I've ever seen was because I have let God's Word dominate me and rule my life. And man, it has transformed me physically, emotionally, financially, in every single way. This is awesome. Again, I could just spend more and more time on that. I got a lot I want to say, but Satan had to Choose the most cunning, the most sly, deceptive animal because he had no power against them. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. Did you know the first thing Satan did to try and deceive Eve was to get her to doubt God's Word? Boy, this is huge. 
You know, I mentioned earlier in the week that I now have a series that kind of is a, an outgrowth of this teaching right here. And I've got a series entitled Biblical Worldview. And we've got four different volumes of that with over 15, 20 hours in each volume. And um, I believe that this is going to be something that will last long after the Lord has come back and taken me. And so I think that this is a legacy issue. But anyway, my point is that I've got a lot more teaching on all of this. And in that first volume, I go into great depth about how do you know that the Word of God is actually God speaking through men versus men having their own thoughts and writing about God. And I go into all kinds of things. I haven't got time uh, to do that here, but man, this is exactly what Satan did right here. He came against the Word of God. Has God said... Because if Eve would have just stuck with what God said, God said over here in, in Genesis chapter 2 and in verse 16, it says, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. If Eve would have just stuck with what God said and said, Look, God told us not to eat of this tree, and so I'm not going to question what his motive is, why he said it. He's God. I'm not. And I'm just going to go by what God said. If she'd have just ended the conversation right there and said, Look, I'm not going to entertain any thoughts. It doesn't matter to me why God said what he said. If she'd have done that, she wouldn't have sinned. But Satan came, and the very first thing he had to do to get Adam and Eve into sin was to get them to question what God had said. And I'm saying this in love to you, but we live in a fallen world. We live in a corrupt world. You know, I live in the United States. This program is seen all around the world, but the United States is one of the best places on the planet, and yet the overall philosophy, the overall thinking of Americans is ungodly. We are adopting values that go against the Word of God. It's gotten to where the Word of God is not popular. The only per people that it's right to persecute, politically correct to persecute in the United States today is Christians, moral people. The ungodly, you can't criticize them. You can't speak against anything they do or they'll call you a homophobe or a bigot or something like that. But Christians, you can, dis you can persecute them. You can discriminate against them. It's, it's ungodly. And it's because they have forsaken the Word of God. You know, the antidote to the deception of the devil is the truth of God's Word. Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And this is what God has called me and anointed me to do, is to share the truth of God's Word and we're seeing it just transform people's lives by the millions. We now have over 8,000 people who are in our Karis Bible College system. That's going through the correspondence course, through our programs overseas and different places in the U.S., as well as about uh, just under 1,200 students who are in our uh, main campus here in Colorado Springs. And we've got so many people wanting to come that we can't accommodate them. We've had hundreds that could not find housing, and that's the only reason that they didn't show up. And so we are in the process of building out our Karis Bible College campus to accommodate just as many people as possible. And we've got two dorms that we're trying to finish up by the start of the 24-25 school year, and it's going to cost millions of dollars to get this done. So I'm coming to my television audience and asking you that if you've been blessed by the truth, if you recognize it's the truth that is the only antidote we have to all of the lies and deceptions today, and if you would like to help me train up other people, I'm asking you to help us raise the finances to get this done. I'm not going to go in debt. I'm not taking out a loan. I'm doing this through my partners. They are my bank. So if you would like to be a part of this, go to awmi.net slash campus and you can see an artist rendering of the buildings. And there's also a place there that you can become a part of this and help us provide housing and all the other facilities for future students. So check it out at awmi.net slash campus. 
Andrew is offering his booklet, Observing All Things, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household. This offer is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, Christian Philosophy, is available as a book and study guide. This series is also available as a nine disc CD album, TV DVD album, and USB made from our daily television broadcast aired in 2012. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $135. Go to our website at awmc.ca to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. I want to make you aware that we have what we call our Heritage Giving Community, and this is for people who want to give an end-of-life gift to the ministry. You know, many of you have just been giving and giving and one of the ways to give is in your will to put the ministry in there and take your assets at the end of your life and use it to promote the gospel. And so we now have this heritage giving community that we have put together. And if you're interested in doing something like that, I'd encourage you to contact us. We'll have all the information on the screen. And this is just a way of you taking the blessing that God has given you and putting it to work even after it's time for you to go and be with the Lord. You'll be blessed. I want to let all of you know who are watching our program in Canada that we have a Canadian office. We also have a website, awmc.ca, and you can go there and you can get all of our materials sent to you from our Canadian office. You can become a partner with us and give and the money will stay right there to help us reach people in Canada. We would love to help you and minister to you any way we can. To learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. You can listen to them while you're online or download them for later and listen on the go. The free materials offered by this ministry are made possible by the generous support of our friends and partners. If Andrew's teachings are making a difference in your life, consider becoming a Grace Partner with Andrew Womack Ministries Canada today. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to hearing from you today.